the camera that is just causing quite a commotion. It did at Photokina, and here it is at uh, Photo Plus in New York, is the new Canon 5D Mark II. Right now it is on a tripod, hooked up to uh, basically shoot stills or video. But the real selling point, and this is where worlds collide, it shoots full HD video, 1920 by 1080. And the guy who was kind of earned his stripes and earned his living as a Pulitzer Prize winning still photographer, that he shot for the New York Times, Vincent LaFore. Vince is now shooting movies. And, and you, yep. you shot a, a, a video for Canon with the 5D, and now it's gone crazy. Yep, and the, the movie was not even shot for Canon, it was independently. They basically said, here's the camera, we don't have any budget, uh, you can borrow it and see what you can do with it, and maybe we'll use it on our website or something. And it was a self-produced, uh, in less than 12 hours, uh, film, and uh, we produced it over two evenings, and showed it to Canon, and uh, put it on my blog, and things kind of went bonkers after that. It's been a very fascinating few weeks. Uh, my career has literally changed overnight. In the next six months are packed with film projects with some pretty heavy hitter directors and producers and some self-produced uh, stuff as well. And um, I've never been this excited. It's, it's been a pretty fascinating ride so far. I, we described it as kind of the when worlds collide. And this is, yes. this is the future right here where it shoots stills and the video. Yep, stills will always be around and high-end still photographers will always be around. I do think that the average still photographer will evolve uh, as newspapers and magazines move heavily towards video and stills, as opposed to stills and video. I think this camera can realistically produce uh, such high-quality video from which stills can be pulled for websites and newspapers, eight columns wide, very easily. It's 1920 pixels by 1080, progressive. Uh, it's more sensitive in low light than most cameras out there by a far margin. Uh, that it's really going to change things. I think this is one of the biggest uh, leaps in technology and in a convergence, um, bigger than the first 35 millimeter camera or digital camera that changed the tools we use. This will redefine what a still photographer is. We're going to be true visual storytellers, uh, still telling those stories with both video and stills. And, and for anybody who's watching this who's a still photographer, we should point out that Vince had never shot any video or edited any video before he, he picked up this new file. I mean, to be accurate, to, to, yeah. I did two. One of my son running around half naked as a toddler and another with just still images on Final Cut Pro for my wedding. That's literally it. Yeah. Uh, I'd never done it, not because of lack of interest, because of tools. I just didn't like them. I bought one of the first 24P cameras five years ago and returned it within a week because the lenses weren't right and didn't feel right, didn't work the way I wanted. When I got this camera in my hands, it was the most natural transition I've ever had. I had a blast with it. It was fun. It was not frustrating in any ways. In fact, I didn't even have a manual. Uh, they didn't have a manual. And they said, we don't really know what format it shoots in. We don't really know. Uh, we didn't even know there was exposure lock on it. We just literally point and shot and uh, had a blast. All right, take it away. Let's, uh, let's shoot some stuff. Sure. I mean, the idea here is this is kind of a Franken camera. This is a, a rig made by a Red Rock Micro. And um, there's a lot of advantages to this camera. One of it is it's small and lightweight. So obviously you wouldn't want to have this on, uh, you know, mounted on this big rig for some uses when you want that light uh, uh, advantage. But a lot of real, you know, real, uh, of there's a lot of different uses. And one of them, you do need stability, and that comes with weight. So this is a Red Rock Micro mount. It allows you to basically have a handle on top to hand carry the camera, two handles on bottom to shoulder mount it, and one of the most important things is the uh, HDMI screen, so that you don't have to rely purely on the um, LCD in the back. That way you can angle it up, uh, you can mount it on the hot shoe, and it gives you a much greater variety of ways to shoot with it. And um, it's got the great mat set, etc., and it's a really nice rig to have. But we, we should also explain that, that you know, that, that this, you don't need this, this. Is, this is not the 101. You can you can just pick it up and start shooting video. Well, everything was, that you saw in Reverie was shot with this body and a few lenses. They didn't have any of this. So literally, it was the camera out of the box with lenses. So this is just, you know, the next iteration of it and an option that's right. come out in the past two weeks. Uh, in the 3-inch screen, it, it's it's bigger, better, higher resolution. It's a re remarkable it's picture really remarkable. just in this, the regular LCD. Absolutely. And the reason I have an LCD at all is so that I can um, angle it in a different way. So I don't have to be looking at the LCD. Other than that, I find that the real LCD is actually one of the best things to use <laughs> for color accuracy yeah. and sharpness. 
and uh, I absolutely love it. Let me try and pull this off without breaking anything. Here you go. So obviously, when you want to shoulder mount it, there you go. This is good for these types of shots where you're panning and want to put some motion in the camera, or the lower angle shot, which any film person will tell you is a great way to do, you know, up and down pans and movement on the ground and up and tilting, etc. And then of course there's a steady cam and gyros and you can go on and on and on. But this is just, you wouldn't be able to do this kind of smooth move with just a 5D because it's just too light. So this adds weight and stability and this screen now makes more sense. Because now I can see the screen and tilt it up and use it in that manner. And then when you put it back on a tripod, then you've got the best of all worlds. Because it's stable with a great head and you can put a 3028 or 4028 or 500 f4 on this and produce some uh, video that you just can't with uh, products out there under $100,000. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? Well, I think some people think about it. They just didn't know it would happen. And it's happened, and um, it's exciting, it's fun, and just try it out. I mean, two years ago, the RED camera came out, and that was 10 grand, and the nearest competitor was 100 grand. Two years later, this comes out, the 5D Mark II, it's a quarter of that price. And for 10 grand, you can buy this camera and a few lenses and produce some pretty amazing quality video. And um, this is the time to be. You know, photographers are worried, saying, oh my God, what's going on? They should be saying, you know, oh my God, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Don't fight the future. Don't fight the future. Not this time. <laughs> You'll be left behind in a bad way. Here's a guy who won a Pulitzer Prize uh, for his work at the New York Times. And now, as he said, for the next six months, you're doing video projects only. It's gone that crazy. It's gone that crazy in a beautiful way. Yep. All right. The Canon 5D Mark II. Unbelievable. The suggested retail at this point, prior to delivery, is like 2700 right? Yeah, 2699 I think. And uh, I think this will be on back order for a very long time. So uh, good luck getting your hands on it. But when you do, you'll they'll have to pry it out of your dead cold hands. <laughs> At Photo Plus in New York City, Jerry Ower, Calumet Photo News.